to code this one if anybody needs it. And if I go back to the place where I have stopped last time, you can see that I have uploaded all the recorded lectures up to the last week. So I have been talking about the galaxies, right? So just let me briefly show you where we were last time. So we started talking about the Milky Way and then we went back to this uh, debate and then studied about the Cepid variable stars and we discussed how uh, we can use Cepid variables to measure the distances to nearby galaxies. And uh, then we have, the Hubble has used that particular method to measure the distances to nearby nebulas. And it was him that uh, figured out that the first galaxy outside our Milky Way, which is the Andromeda galaxy. And also he measured the distance to that particular galaxy using this method. And after that, we tried to, you know, understand a little bit more about our Milky Way and how people tried to map the Milky Way and and this uh, importance of RR live stars to map the Milky Way, those kind of things. And again, this period luminous relationship for RR live as stars. Right, and then we discuss about the structure of the Milky Way a little bit, and then uh, you know, motion of stars, those kind of stuff. And then uh, at the end, uh, we started talking about the dark matter of galaxies right so that's where we i guess we were last time and then uh, there are some important parameters normally we used to look at uh, when we are studying about the galaxies and one such important parameter is uh, mass to light ratio so that is uh, uh, for it, if you take an example for stars like sun the mass to light ratio is one According to our definition. Definition is that ratio of its mass in the units of the solar masses to its light output, which is in terms of sun's luminosity. So if you consider the sun, the mass to light ratio will be one, right? Uh, mostly we use this particular measurement to uh, look at galaxies, right? Not stars. When you look at galaxies in this way, uh, we actually uh, used to measure the mass to light ratio for galaxies and uh, when you have galaxies with uh, uh, some star formation is still going on, their mass to light ratio is uh, typically between 1 and 10. And then uh, if you take about uh, galaxies with mostly older stellar population, uh, for example, for elliptical galaxies, we have some the stellar population is a little bit older and your mass to light ratio will be around 10 to 20. However, if you take the dark matter into account in galaxies, these mass to light ratios can be as high as 100. So what the idea is, if you are given the values of mass to light ratio, you should be able to get an idea about the type of galaxy that you are looking at and some of these properties, right? And I have mentioned the different uh, differences of different types of galaxies, uh, basically uh, spirals, ellipticals, and irregular galaxies. And then about uh, the idea about the dark matter, and then the different uh, classification systems for galaxies. Specifically, we are looking at the Hubble classification of galaxies and different types, how they are related those kind of things. And these are actually explained a little bit in detail in my shared uh, video about the galaxies, which is basically that first part is actually what we have already discussed last week, but you can you will see all these details about the properties of elliptical galaxies and then irregular galaxies. And at the end, we will talk about the zero type galaxies, right? And then what is dwarf galaxies and the examples for dwarf galaxies. Keep in mind that these will be in your exams, right? So you, you should look at those videos, right? Otherwise, you will have try to answer the questions by looking at those videos. So that is the best way to understand and apply it at the same time. So this, in this way, you will really learn about it, right? And just come up with your answers and the next day, 
from the next day onward i am going to discuss your tutorials and this past paper so we will go uh, as far much as possible for the next three hours right so things will be a lot easier and you will understand what i am telling if you go through these video lectures and try to answer the questions you will say right so that is the idea and then uh, the next uh, lecture will be about the distribution of galaxies and uh, so i will show you the video here i mean you can uh, you will see that uh, this is again uh, one of the lect past lectures that i did so i thought that maybe i should not repeat the same thing so that you can you will see that we started uh, looking at galaxy groups and then the colliding galaxies and then the hubble law so these are very important things right motion of galaxies so please go through and understand what is mentioned in this video and also there is this uh, uh, chapter 19 document as well as a pdf which is the lecture slide so you can combine that uh, with the video basically you can see that it's the same video so we, i have started talking about the hubble law expansion of the universe and different ways that we can understand the expansion and then hubble constant and there are examples of applying hubble law and what is look back time those kind of things and measuring the distances using the redshift, how we do that, and early type galaxies, and how star formation change with redshift dependence. So all these are things I explained in the, the video that I have shared, right? So make sure that you go through and look at uh, that video so that you will get a better idea, right? How galaxies are distributed in the space and then one of the most important principles which is the cosmological principle which gives you an idea about you know you, ha you cannot talk anything about the cosmology without you know having a little bit knowledge about the cosmological principle and then uh, what is the local group and uh, neighboring group of galaxy clusters those kind of things And then here is the map of the large scale structure of the universe, which includes, you know, galaxy and especially galaxy clusters. There are a lot of details, so make sure that you go to the lecture note plus the video with that, right? And then the last lecture for you will be about the Big Bang Theory, where you, we discuss how the universe so this is that particular video if you need to look at very briefly this one right here so it's basically about the big bang theory and uh, so i basically explain the cosmology how the universe started and how it changed with its expansion of the universe how did it began uh, so this is Big Bang and the Hubble time. Those, so there are a lot of equations. Now some equations are there and these parameters and things are very important. So everything is uh, explained in the, the video. So though you can just go back and look at it, right? And uh, the other thing is, uh, so I have shared separate small YouTube videos that you just need to get some idea about the general relativity. We have discussed that before as well. So the, that will be the last lecture. So make sure that you go through these uh, lecture notes and also through the video to get a better understanding. And after that, what you have to do is go to this problem set two. And I assume that problem set one you have already completed. So I have uploaded an answer guide today for the problem set uh, one. However, I will also discuss uh, very briefly about these answers as well. And here is the problem set two, where you will have some questions about, you know, about our galaxy and then the Hubble classification uh, and some questions about the galaxies, uh, measuring distances to spiral, uh, nearby spiral galaxy and how would it be measured. So you can see that these are related to what I have discussed. Uh, last week and also the videos that I have, I have uploaded right now, right? So about the Hubble law, how to calculate things, 
so like that uh, so there are questions right and how to use the separate stars to calculate the distance to the large Magellanic cloud and then cosmological redshift cosmological density parameter cosmic microwave background dark matter and dark energy and these things are discussed in the last two lectures so that's why it is important go through and look at the video right and try to answer these questions yourself right so most of you are asking what is in the exam those kind of questions now the time has come to understand what is in the exam right so so these type of questions you should know the answers right that doesn't mean that you will get the same questions but the content that we are discussing and the, the outcome that i expect from you at the end of the lecture series are kind of you know summarized in all these problems so basically you should get that idea and apart from that uh, some of you ask about the uh, the past paper so i have uploaded the part b of the past paper and for the actually there are two two sections of the exam paper the first section is an mcq paper which consists of 20 to 25 mcq questions uh, so i can't remember the exact number but the questions will be pretty much uh, how it looks like the two uh, in class examinations that you will you one one you already had and i guess the other one you will have it on tomorrow right so that will be pretty much uh, your final part of final exam part a, a will be an mcq question paper like that and then there is the, this part b you have three questions structured uh, questions and you have to answer two questions out of that so you will get one hour and 20 minutes for this one and 40 minutes for the mcq part and uh, So basically, uh, the mark allocation will be that each uh, each question will have equal weights. For example, if you have to answer two questions, so that will be around like let's say forty marks for each question. So there will be eighty marks from this section, and for the twenty MCQs you will have in part A, you will get another forty marks. Like roughly one third of the marks will go into MCQ question paper. And here are some sample, you can get an idea what kind of things that you should know, right? So there will be nothing new uh, that you have not studied in the class. Uh, so there will be everything that I will be asking will be based on uh, what I have taught in the class. Uh, and I this is what I expect from you at the end, right? So the first question, there are part three parts. You can see that the question seems to be a little bit longer, but you know, you have 40 minutes for each of these questions. So you just need to, you know, answer two questions, right? So the first question is based on the different coordinate systems and then about the orbital motions of the planets and those kind of things. And then about, you know, the technologies that we use in astronomy, like instruments and CCD cameras, right? like advantage, disadvantage of those, and then about a small you know, question about a telescope to calculate the focal ratio, and then like gathering power of a telescope. So these things we discussed initially. And then the second question is basically based on, you know, the brightness of the stars and properties of the stars, those kind of things, right? And how to measure the distances using parallax and then the color index and then about the HR diagram, those kind of things, right? So there is an HR diagram given here, so you can see that. So with those kind of things. So if you uh, answer, if you can answer these questions, I guess you should, I mean, you should be okay because I, mean, I will be testing whether you know these kind of stuff, right? And uh, then the third one is, you know, about the galaxies in globular and open clusters and uh, those kind of uh, papers and apart from these uh, actually there will be you know some there may be one or two new sections that i taught for example about the sun uh, that will be one section that we have, may not have taught but this is the structure of the exam paper right and uh, so try to answer these questions and i will highly recommend that you go through first especially this question number three as the first one because uh, 
to answer the question number three, you will have to look at those two videos, the three videos that actually I have uploaded, and then you will find how to answer the questions and those lectures, right? So try to answer this question and get an idea about uh, what we have discussed here. So if you can uh, look at the video and try to answer this question, in that way you will learn yourself and if time permits, we will discuss it, right? So otherwise you have to do it your own, right? So, but you can get the idea, right? So the, the basically outcome is that you watch the video and try to understand and then uh, with the questions. And for the, so one of you asking, do we have a MCQ paper for the ice 2 exam? Yes, for the ice 2 exam, I have mentioned that repeatedly. So you will have a MCQ paper, which is which is uh, the structure or the format of the paper is very similar to what you got for the IS one IS IS one exam. Uh, so the only thing thing is the content is now different because the first one we talked uh, you know on something up to the stars. Now the second one begins the stars and it's completely about you know the different properties of the stars magnitudes and HR diagrams those kind of stuff that we talk until the last day about the stellar motion right so though that's the content of the second ice exam and then uh, for the third part third section is about the galaxies and this distribution of galaxies hubble and then cosmological principles and then also about the big bang so th that part is uh, what i have uh, here in this question number three right so that's why I ask you to please go through those uh, lecture notes and try to answer this question in uh, question number three, right? Uh, so make sure that uh, so I, as I, will, I assume that all of you will go through it and try to answer these questions, right? And also for the, the part B. So if, if I feel that I should have some other more questions, then I will maybe you know discuss a few other example questions in the coming classes as well. Right. So my aim today was to explain this structure for you and just to give you a very, you know, brief uh, uh, idea about the, the lecture notes that I have uploaded for the final few lectures so that you will get kind of a summary from me and then look at those videos to get the idea in detail. And if you are, I mean, if you go through those uh, videos and the lectures, then you should be able to you know, uh, answer this question, right? I mean, if you have doubts and some kind of thing, then we can clear it up during the lecture. So that's how it works. Now, if you don't do it yourself, then you will not have any questions. And also you will not understand anything what I am, you know, telling, right? So that's the idea. Right, so that's what I need to explain today. So that's why I told you that I will only take half an hour from you today. And, uh, let me see if I, if it is possible, then the next lecture I will try to do on uh, tomorrow night or uh, Friday. Uh, so let's see tomorrow night. So we plan an observation session here or at night. So if that doesn't work, then I may have a lecture. I will update you with about it in the evening, right? So we prepared for like another two or three sessions during this week. Right. to finish up your lectures. So once again, make sure that you go through the lecture notes, the videos that I have uploaded. I mean, do not uh, this, you know, do not just discard those videos because I haven't done it. I will surely, I will surely have questions from those, right? So only is that the teaching method is now different. You are going through the videos and look at it and I am answering and discussing the questions regarding uh, that I included on those videos with you in the class, right? So that's how it works. I mean, this way, if you didn't look at the video and refer the note, then you will not understand it or you don't know how to answer the question as well. Right, so that's it from my side for today. Anybody have any questions here? There was one question about the ICE exam, so I, have, I guess I have answered for that. Anybody have any questions? Other than that?
right so seems that you do not have any question so let me stop from here now so good luck with your exam tomorrow so i hope all of you do will do better and you know if you go through those ice exams and you it should be pretty you know so it shouldn't be a very hard in your final exams because you have already studied right Right, so then I will stop from here if you do not have any questions and we will meet again, you know, for the final few lectures again some, at some point in this week, right? Right, thank you for coming and good night to everyone.